Okay, so uh, finally, after many, many visits to Poland, I make it to the beautiful city of Krakow. Um, and I make it here to discuss the future of Magento. Now, we should all take a moment and wonder why we're listening to me talk about the future of anything. I can't usually plan beyond my current day. But um, what I wanted to do was to give an update on where we are, what the plans are that we have to help continue to move Magento ever forward. My name, I'm Ben Marks. I sit on the strategy and growth team uh, at Magento. I've been working as our evangelist officially for a little, little under three and a half years, uh, unofficially, probably a good bit before that. And in order to celebrate or discuss our, um, our future, you really have to understand where you've come from. And where we've come from, for those of you who may be newer to the Magento world, how many of you are at a Magento event for the very first time? Wow. I saw a couple of you. I know I've seen you at some events. Um, that's a lot of new faces. Uh, hopefully you will find this community as, as uh, warm and inviting and full of knowledge uh, as I have. I've been doing, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 events a year, and I still learn something new every time I'm here. But this history goes all the way back to 2007, when uh, development started on the Magento project, right? Just, just a company with a dream, an agency with a dream in California. And it's grown into this thing that we have today. So our journey took us through our founding as a software company, 2007, up to uh, a period of time that we were owned by eBay, and then a period of time where eBay said, okay, it's not me, it's you. No, we went out, we got spun out, uh, picked up by a company named Premira, and so we've been independent now for a couple of years. So we had our launch, we had our release of Magento 2 in 2015, and then we've had a number of other things that we've delivered, right? So our timeline with uh, bigger offerings like Magento Order Management, the, 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 the re-release, the new release of our marketplace where we were functioning more like an app store, which is what we ideally would have done from the beginning. Um, we, have, uh, we acquired RJ Metrics, and that became our business intelligence arm. We have the uh, release of Magento 2.1, and then a couple of acquisitions. We have Magento Social, we had a CMS, uh, CMS system that we have in are integrating into our core, um, and our upcoming B2B release, as well as shipping, uh, shipping service, package, environment. Um, and then earlier this year, we received a substantial investment from a private equity firm in Hong Kong, Hill House Capital. So um, you can see, again, imagine getting the vision for this as an agency and then having this grow into what it is today. It's, it's gone pretty far afield. It's got a life of its own. So that kind of gets us a summary up to where we are today, in the present. Um, and I would say that this world that we're, we're working in I don't know that I've ever been around a more consistently innovative group of people. Um, and it's a big community, right? We've got a, a quarter of a million people on the forums. We've got people interacting in forums all over the place. We've got people hosting all sorts of events around the world. We're present in pretty much every industry vertical there is. And there is a bit of magento, there's at least a little piece of orange in damn near every country around the world. And we're trying to figure out how to get into the rest. Uh, Cuba mentioned that there were continents that are still waiting for magento. And we are currently just trying to train penguins so we can have meet magento Antarctica. Cuba will probably have a marathon there uh, when, when we finally show up. Um, this history has uh, not only given us a rich community, but it's 
given us uh, a powerful position in marketplaces throughout the world. We have, well, we've got accolades, right? We're recognized as a leader um, pretty much everywhere that it matters, right? So we have um, the most recent, uh, most recently being named um, a leader in the magic quadrant. And for me, um, for me, this means that we get to, uh, we get the attention now uh, at the top. We, we get the attention at the enterprise space. But these accolades all come down, they all resolve down to the work that we do as a company, building a product, and the work that you all do in the community. And what, is this, what does this work all get us? What does this mean? What's the market impact of Magento? As of right now, $124 billion a year in uh, global volume is enabled by Magento Codebase. 124 billion. We're looking at 60 million online buyers interacting with Magento Codebase. And 5 billion is in, that's in the service economy of Magento. I want to actually differentiate between these two numbers. 124 billion in essentially enabled commerce transactions. But just in the business of doing business, $5 billion, that is, that is people's lives. That's their livelihood. That's my career. It's your careers. It's our aspirations. Magento has been a life-changing force the world over, especially here in Europe. The amazing slash lightly scary thing for me is how much this is going to grow over the next several years. And this is, this is, these are not my numbers. These are professional analyst numbers whose jobs it is to get this right. So we're looking at an almost doubling of growth in the next few years. Um, another 40 million plus buyers interacting with Magento. Uh, Magento code base and services, and looking at a service economy of 14, almost 14 billion dollars. So think about all of the business that you see today, all the people that you know, and imagine, you know, doubling that, and then 50 percent again. It's a big, big responsibility. It's one of these things. I can look at this slide and I can go, "Wow, holy shit." And then I can also look at this slide and go, holy shit. Because we have to get this right. We have to build what needs to be built. And we have to build it when it needs to be built. And we can't even, I don't think we can do it all on our own. So let me, let me tell you what our, what our vision is, what our plans are, what we're doing. So I have this broken out into uh, four topics, product innovation, strategic partnerships and acquisitions, growth in emerging markets, and then finally, and very near and dear to my heart, community collaboration. So you may have recently noticed um, a, a slight rebranding in how we name things. And this was intentional, this was deliberate. We are focusing, because we feel it is a, a compelling offer, we are focusing on Cloudverse. So our cloud product, if you haven't seen it, right, this is, this is Magento in the cloud. Those of you who have been around long enough, this is not similar to a previous uh, Magento in the cloud initiative. This is a whole entirely different thing. It's a platform as a service approach as opposed to software as a service which means it's your code and it's our infrastructure. And we work with you to you know, size things out, find the right plan. Uh, you just talk with, uh, talk with our, uh, our sales team to kind of figure out exactly what is gonna be right for you. But what we have is a well-defined stack and you have one vendor that you have to deal with, us. 
right? It's not, if, if anything is out of sorts, if there's some issue with, with how cron's working, you don't have to go chasing down, is it my solution provider? Is it my hosting provider? Is it some other person in there? You have one, uh, one support stack to deal with. Uh, we baked in some, uh, some important diagnostics, uh, especially with, with Blackfire and New Relic. And then we also have developer tooling around this, specifically so that as a developer, if you need a staging instance, uh, you just take, create a branch and you have a staging instance to work with. So this was, this was something that we, uh, we announced uh, a little while ago. And then recently, I don't know how many of you noticed, but we've actually taken this and we've made this self-serve. You can now sign up for this and provision it through our website. So in fact, if you go to magento.com, click under the products area, you'll see how you can get going on cloud. We actually have a 30-day trial <laughs> so that you can see what this environment looks and feels like. I've had a chance to uh, provision it myself. Uh, it works, uh, works quite quickly and easily. Um, this is just the start of what this will look like for us. Um, so this gives, I think, uh, it gives you some information, some indication on where our mind is. Now, one of the questions that I get when I talk about our uh, cloud commerce is does this mean that on-premises is going away? And that's absolutely not the case. Uh, as I've had conversations with, uh, with SIs and merchants here in Poland, it's very clear that on-premises remains, for some of you, it's the only option. And that's fine. That's why we keep parity between on-prem and, uh, and our, our past versions. Moreover, the soul of this remains Magento Open Source, which is previously known as Magento Community Edition. So Magento Open Source uh, becomes the center, or, I'm sorry, remains the center around which all of the technology is driven, right? So there's, there's really no way for any of that to go away. Um, our order management product continues to evolve, and uh, one of the things that, one of the things that I uh, I find amazing is there are several large vendors out there in the world that you would never know are running all of Magento's stack. But order management really becomes that full picture of what customers are doing today when they're interacting with an enterprise brand, right? They are, um, they are increasingly expecting to uh, buy online, pick up in store, or be in a store and have something that's not in stock there delivered to their home. It's about meeting the customer wherever he or she is and making sure that they have access to your full catalog, that you have full insight into your catalog, and that you have the information that you need to make smart decisions about your inventory. In this area, we are also, we are always looking at how to, um, how to improve this offering, um, and that does include some, uh, potentially some strategic acquisitions, right? So if you're aware of any, any businesses out there that, that fit in, uh, might fit into our omni-channel story, uh, feel free to let me know, and we will take a look at that. That's one of the things that the strategy and growth team uh, spend a lot of our time doing, is looking at ways that we can bring interesting companies, interesting technologies into the fold. Another new, uh, a new thing for us, well, for us as a product company to build out, business to business. So we have, as part, uh, coming out as part of the Magento, uh, Magento Commerce Core, business to business platform. So this is, this is part of what you would have known previously as our enterprise product. And business to business, uh, interestingly enough, we, we were the leader in business to business before we even had a deliberate business-to-business -business product. People have just been taking Magento, and I know some of you have taken Magento and made it a business-to-business -business platform and maybe have more gray hairs because of it, right? There's, there are a lot of challenges to solve when you take something that's focused for B2C and you make it work in the B2B world. 
So what we did was we actually went around to all of these experts that we already had in our own, in our own sphere, and we asked you what you needed. Like, what, what are the most, common, uh, the most common set of requirements? And we built those. So you have the ability to set up company structures inside Magento B2B. And inside those company structures, you, know, you have, you can break out roles. And these people have uh, different privileges of things they can do in the system. Can they build a quote? How large can that quote be? Can they place an order? How, how large does that order be? Uh, that's one flow. You can extend and, uh, and administer credit for company organizations. And uh, there's quick reordering, there's ordering by SKU, you can actually, you can type in SKUs, you can import a list of SKUs to build out orders. It's all about, these are, these are the interactions that people have already. Uh, a lot of people still doing this by fax machine, right? So people are slowly moving away from that. The B2B market is... Uh, continues to be one of the, 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 the fastest growing spaces for us, for business. So this is just, uh, just an example of a few of the features that we've built. And I'm, I'm happy to say that it, even when it was, this was in alpha, uh, one of the largest uh, B2B implementations went live in Germany. Um, not that I recommend you build your stores on alpha software, but... Um, We've, we, know from, we know from early feedback in the market that uh, what we built was right. Because we built this, we built this not as um, the be-all, end-all. We built this for, as a basis for your customization. Because B2B, uh, e-commerce is always custom, B2B even more so. And then we have a great, for, for the developers in the room, we have a great Swagger API underneath for you to build against uh, for all of your integrations. Another area of innovation for us, uh, and when I say innovation, um, this is innovation by acquisition. We bought, uh, we bought an analytics company, RJ Metrics. Just visited their office in Philly a few days ago. Great team, uh, but they're now fully integrated into Magento. And pretty much the whole team stayed on board, so we've got an office of about 40 people there. Um, business intelligence. So we have a few different tiers. But this is, this is more than just like, oh, okay, someone came to your store and they bought a thing. It gives you the ability to track, tie into campaigns, figure out the money that you've spent versus the profile and the real profile of who that person is. So you can see, okay, we made an adjustment in, uh, in retargeting or AdWords and we made X dollars from this campaign. Well, this on the back end helps you really tie that data to a customer profile and find out, well, you know, we did get this customer back, but what do we think they would have done anyway? Was it worth the spend? And one of the nice things that this does is this gives the power. You don't actually have to be, you don't have to have a degree in, in like business analytics to be able to build reports together. That's a lot of what this does is it gives power to, say, a merchandiser to build reports that matter to him or to her. And then, even better, is you can take this data and then integrate it into your, your own offering if you are uh, an extension vendor. You can actually build off of the Magento BI backend because all of the data in the system and the way it's aggregated can come back uh, can be taken out, and you can work with it. Um, right, so. Also, if you haven't heard, we have a security tool coming out. This is, uh, I would say, analogous to uh, Majorport, but this is actually going to, this is done, registered under your account in, on Magento.com. The idea is, very simply, you register your domain with your account, you generate a key, and then you install that key in your Magento instance, and then our service will scan, right? The reason we ask you to register is so that you're not, uh, we're not DDoSing, uh, <laughs> DDoSing people 
uh, or, or <laughs> allowing people to be DDoS through our service. Um, and what we do is we, uh, so we'll run a scan, we'll check for, uh, we'll, we'll check for evidence that you have all the, the appropriate patches applied. We will check for additional vulnerabilities as well and we'll give you rep a report. And that report will include, hey, these, are, these things are green, these are good, and then also action items, things you need to do. The idea is that this is a source of truth between you and any of the vendors working with your, uh, working with the Magento instance. And then, further innovation, we have progressive web apps. And our recently announced PWA Studio. The most important thing to know here is James Zetlin. So James is, if you've not met him yet, he is, he's a personality. Uh, uh, quite sharp, came to us, he was, he was actually running PayPal's, uh, PayPal's front end stack. Uh, and, and we managed to, to woo him away and get him over into the Magento. Um, PWA initiative is actually, it is a collaboration between, uh, between us and Google. Uh, a, a, a little while ago, several months ago, we were all at, at Google's campus. Uh, Bartek from Snowdog was there. Uh, Yissa was there um, in spirit. Well, no, in video, on the video screen uh, at, at, at some absurd hour of the night. Uh, <laughs> uh, just digging into how, you, how Magento can, can approach uh, this, this mobile first, this, this, this real shift in how we do front end work. And if you haven't played around, and, and the thing is many of us, many of us in, like in North America and Europe, we may not see, we may not see the, the, the significance of AMP and PWA, but there are entire storefronts that are built on this technology. And furthermore, Google is, is they're, they're putting out RFCs. You actually are having a payments API built into the browser, right? So you, you, have, you, have, you have checkouts, checkout stories that can exist almost entirely in the PWA space. And where this really matters is place, are places where mobile speeds aren't what they should be, but yet no one has ever experienced a website on a desktop. They only know the web through their phone. One of the important things uh, and interesting things for me about PWA is this means that we will be, we will be getting into, uh, you know, really digging into our, our service layer, our API layer. Like how we power this is going to involve some fundamental, some fundamental uh, work to build, out, um, uh, to build out what we can offer via web service. Right? So stay tuned to this space. Uh, we'll be working on this for the next year, but you'll be, feeling, you'll be seeing the effects of this um, within the next six months for sure. And emerging markets. Uh, so, I mentioned that, that PWA is important, it's, it's, it's essential for places where the web is always on the phone and the connection is not always high speed. Uh, well, we see huge growth potential in Asia Pacific, and I love how we call it Asia Pacific, almost like it's this one market that can be encapsulated with a singular approach. You, know, you can't encapsulate India or China with a single approach. Uh, you, you can't even go into those countries and take a single approach. Um, so we're doing, uh, myself in particular, we're looking at how we really get into these markets and get into customer behavior, get into what the merchants need, what they expect, and how, um, and how their markets are moving a bit towards what we're used to in the West where we have almost a personal experience with the brands, and the brands have access to their customer data. Right now, if you have a successful business in China, you very well are selling on like Tmall. You're selling through one of the big marketplaces. 
and you're kind of at their mercy when it comes to pricing and fulfillment. You're at their mercy when it comes to them holding on to customer data. We say no. We give the power for brand experience. We give the power for access to your customers, uh, control of your customers' data. That's one of the things that Magento does well. Um, but it's a real challenge. There's language barrier, there's cultural barriers. Uh, there are spelling challenges. Uh, uh, Hido took this picture from uh, Meet Magento Shenzhen. Um, they managed to spell Kuba Twolinski correctly. They missed Ben Marks. Um, it was, it was, it's an humbling experience. I never, leave, I never leave China anything less than fascinated at how much more I don't know. Um, so this is, but this is important. We have to grow out. We have to grow out in these markets. It will enrich all of us. And another thing that I'm trying to figure out is how to connect these markets with what we have here. But we have, as a business, boots on the ground uh, in Asia now, which we didn't before. Uh, and that is giving us some further insight. So you'll begin to see Magento have more presence. And as you want to go multinational, or as you already may be multinational, um, work with us. We have events coming up uh, in Japan, I know, in November. And I am working on an event series in India as well. And then we have folks like Magento, our training partner, who are doing trainings, uh, trainings on behalf of Magento U in India already. And of course, Meet Magento is uh, looking to open up a Chinese office in Shenzhen. And finally, I bring us to community collaboration. Uh, how many of you participated in the contribution day yesterday? A few of you. Uh, yeah, we had about 40 people there. So earlier this year, uh, Max Yukaterienko, uh, picked some of the best and brightest, and also of Jenny, um, to, to, to have a team to go around and facilitate, uh, facilitate community work, pull requests, to improve the Magento core. Whether you're adding features or you're solving, resolving reported bugs. And that issue proved very popular and very successful. And so we grew it into another initiative, right? So uh, the, the, the building of an actual complex feature using this approach, fully in collaboration with our community. Max has a presentation coming up on this today. I recommend you visit it because this is the future of Magento development. We expect, we fully expect, and we will fully work towards having our community working much more closely, contributing much more code to build the actual product itself. And later on, I'm literally right in the middle of building out some, uh, building out a contribution program that gives some incentive to get people who have never contributed to open source before, to get them engaged, bring them in, and make this a normal thing. Ideally, ideally, an outcome would be if you're working on a Magento project, if you're working for a, a merchant, or you're working at an SI, or even if you're an independent, you'll reserve some time of your week, every week, to at least look at the issue list and perhaps find something that you can contribute on. Oh, I forgot about my, my innovation lab, sorry. Uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is it. And uh, we just announced the innovation lab. Um, the innovation lab is a way for us to acknowledge all of the really cool stuff that, that this community does. Uh, so far this year, we've seen uh, the two examples I hold up. Uh, uh, Tom Robert Shaw from MeanBee has an Alexa order integration. We're just, hey Alexa, where's my order? And then at a hackathon in Munich earlier this year, I watched a team of uh, I think three developers. They built a product recommendation um, chatbot using botman.io and it was connected to a Magento 2 instance. And that was done within 
24, 36 hours. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that's really interesting. These aren't formal products. These are people just taking this technology and this technology and bringing them together. This is the kind of bleeding edge, really cool stuff that we want to see. Uh, so if you're working on something like this or you're thinking about it, get going, build that proof of concept, make a submission to the Innovation Lab. We will take a look at it. We, we, will, we will promote you. And if it's really, really interesting uh, and, and marketable, we will gladly work with you to become a tech partner. We would also potentially acquire. But at the very least, we want to make sure that your innovation is promoted, that other people see what you're working on. So with that, I will say uh, thank you. Push forward into the future. We will try and keep up with what you are doing. Thank you very much.